Dr. Vanessa, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me. It's been a little while since we talked. Can you give us an update? Uh, as we record peak rainy season, it rained like crazy last night. There's still construction going on everywhere. I think the noise is behind you too. Um, just get us up to speed. Everything in your world, please. We're excited to hear from you. Of course. Well, um, as I said, thanks for having me again. Um, basically, we have uh, continued to monitor weekly at the three locations in Rio Nosara and two spots in Guiones. Um, as of January, we started testing for an additional bacteria called Enterococcus. And this is a more widely accepted standard for water quality because, especially for marine waters, because it actually survives longer in salt water. Um, and what we've been doing, essentially what we've seen is that um, every time that there's very heavy rainfall, we're seeing that bacteria popping up in Guiones and the river mouth is essentially contaminated the entire rainy season. So we're just kind of getting started. You know, we've got September and October ahead of us, um, but we've already seen um, both at Baker's Beach and at the Palm Tree, um, those sites failing um, several times already this rainy season. Man, this is tough news. So it sounds like uh, this isn't a pleasant recording on, on this episode for you. Uh, like, what do we do? What do you guys need? Like, uh, geez, that, that stinks. Yeah, you know, it's a really big issue. Um, and I think everyone, it's good to be skeptical. And, and I am as well. So I actually, we went in and put in an extra day of sampling and went all the way to the source of the Nosara River mouth to find out if this is something that's coming from upstream, essentially. Um, and what we see is the whole entire Rio Nosara is contaminated, but nowhere near the levels that we're seeing at the river mouth. So it seems Makes pretty sense. apparent based on the little bit of work that we've done that a lot of that pollution is actually coming from much closer to Nosara and from Nosara itself. And we did the same thing in Guiones at these different estuaries or these little streams that end up in the ocean when the rainy season comes um, and upstream there there it was contaminated but much lower levels but once it went through the development here that shot up so what that tells me um, from that little bit of research we, we've done that kind of confirms that the issue here is septic tanks um, and drain fields that are not adequate um, so everyone should be having a look at where the water goes from your house, um, making sure that you have a grease trap for the water that comes out of your kitchen sink and that that's cleaned every three months, making sure you have a septic tank that is properly sized and sealed off so that when it rains, that water isn't escaping and making sure that you have a proper area where that water can drain. And just to give you a quick idea, based on some of the, how slow the water infiltrates the ground in rainy season here, for each person in your home, you probably require an area about the size of the average size of a bedroom, um, like three by four meters. Um, for that amount, for every single person, you need that area. You and I both know that most of us don't have that much extra room on our property. So really all of us need to have a look at that. And if you don't meet those requirements, then you're going to have to come up with a more uh, efficient enclosed wastewater treatment system, or even just have a holding tank that you regularly have to have a septic tank come and empty out. Thank you for sharing all of this. Where, where, uh, I mean, just where to begin. Nick stopped me on the road two days ago and told me, I, I don't want to share any too much information, but he shared some horror stories with very, very small properties. Um, and he was explaining what's needed mathematically and what's just not physically available. People listening to this can do something about their situation. And thank you for the guidance on that. But how does this solve like the bigger issue without just getting to the higher levels of government and a regulatory plan and all that type of stuff? Like, I just don't see a solution. It's, it's just real scary. And it's peak rainy season. So it's really wet right now. Yeah, it's just really scary. It sounds like you don't have a good, well, you don't really have a solution unless people do it themselves because it's not going to come from the government. Is that kind of what's going on? Yeah, I mean, basically in Costa Rica, the responsibility is pretty much entirely put on each individual homeowner or property owner. And so it's completely up to you. 
even in the construction process to push and make sure that what goes in the ground is what's adequate for how many people are going to be using that property. And in terms of enforcement, um, you know, everyone knows we're in a remote area. There's very little funding or resources for the government here. And that's why so many of the nonprofits are doing work that's you know basically essential. Um, and so the most that we can do is file denuncias. If you see that there's an issue, you can report that to the Ministry of Health. And in theory, they're going to be required to follow up on that. But to be honest with you, I don't think that that's the most productive way to go about this. Yeah. Um, the little yeah. that we've learned um, from visiting sites, from talking to people like Nick who are working on this is that most of us are non-compliant. And so by doing that, we're just going to turn against each other and some people can't even afford to replace their system. So what we really need to do, unfortunately, is go door by door, um, checking when you see construction sites, look at what's going in the ground, try to find out who the owner is and make sure people are aware of this. Um, and we really need to continue monitoring. I think this is really important for everyone to be aware um, for their safety. Um, and also, hopefully, we get to see how this community doing all of these changes is going to actually eventually improve water quality for us. I hope that a few years from now, we can have this talk and I can tell you, you know, great results. <laughs> um, and that's, I think that we have that power. I think that's possible, but it is going to take a lot of work. And um, we're working on getting funding and resources here to, to help us reach that goal. Speaking of funding, how, how are you guys doing funding wise? I remember Dr. Edgeworth started it off and then you worked traveling to every location continuously. And then you just added, I guess, another, uh, I don't know if the, right the word, I'm not a doctor or scientist, a strand of bacteria, whatever is the terminology. It sounds like things are progressing for you. Is, is that is that accurate? Are you guys doing okay as far as that stuff goes? We're okay for now through the end of the year, but every single year we require about $15,000 to keep right. up with getting all of those supplies here to Nosara and getting myself, volunteers, people out there to collect the samples and analyze them and getting these results out to you. So, um, you know, there's, there's some specific costs associated with that. So we're always fundraising. We always need more support. We're always happy to have also more volunteers to help us get awareness out there um, we've applied for a few grants but those grants are specifically for coming up with these solutions uh, to improve people's septic fields um, and so those grants won't cover us to continue monitoring and that's what's really important I think to make sure that we continue that that's what's going to apply more pressure to the government more pressure to the right. municipality the more that we talk about this um, they're going to be pressured to do something and to come up with some kind of solution no, sorry, it generally does come together in crisis mode, but sometimes it takes us to get to crisis mode for it to happen. Mm -hmm. So this is a tough situation because we there's a lot of different things going on. There's a lot of different funding needed. The Bombers need money. You guys need money. Everybody needs money. We're going into the, the rainy season where it's harder to, to, to get money generated. But so many of our things around here are on the people from here. What, what I'm getting at is we got to find a way to make it so people want to do the things that you described mm -hmm. earlier. Like instead of yelling at them or calling a government to come and force something that they just aren't capable of system. So many of us don't, aren't up to speed properly, just as Nick said and you said. Like, how, I don't know. I mean, do we do it on episodes like this? Can we bring up some success stories in the future? Or would you see something, Nick see something, somebody see somebody doing it right? How about we publicize that? Like, how about we glorify that mm -hmm. and we make it to where people are like, hey, did I do that? I'm not right. Well, maybe I should get right. You know what I mean? And get some momentum. What What do you think about trying that? I 100% agree with you. I, um, you know, that's one of my firm beliefs. I think that we need to take a positive angle and show people what the solutions are, who's doing it right, rather than bringing everyone down who doesn't have the perfect system. Because honestly, nobody's perfect. Um, so I encourage everyone to share on social media. Uh, use hashtags, tag our organization, the WCA, and we'll share it as well. Um, share with with Rich as well. This podcast has been a great success for us to reach more people. Um, we share all of our resources, and I'd love to get out there as well with our photographer and videographer to start documenting what people are doing and sharing these success stories. Our organization is also working. Um, I can't make promises as to when this will be ready to go, but we're working on basically a certification program um, that's general, but includes wastewater and how that's managed. 
so that um, this can start to be something that we celebrate. People will kind of have to have this certificate of, you know, we meet these basic requirements uh, to be more eco-friendly in general. Um, and we'd love to have that become a movement to celebrate people that are doing things right um, and focus on that so that hopefully more of us are motivated to do the same. Awesome. Why don't we do that for our next episode? Just you, Nick, Dr. Edgeworth, whoever, just when someone does it right, let's just, even if it's just a basic photo, let's make that like our next episode. Because if we just alarm the problem, people are like, yeah, I know there's a problem. We all have problems. Like it kind of, you know what I mean? It kind of goes by the wayside. Yeah, I think I think it's important for people to share their story and for us to all understand. Um, it's, you know, just like we're always in denial. It's easy to some of us might be very concerned and might have run out there and looked at your septic tank and figured out, oh, this is too small or whatever. But there's probably a whole other group of people that are really concerned about the issue, but avoiding looking at their own system. Right. Um, and so I think it's really helpful to illustrate to people, you know, actually a photo of someone standing on the septic tank to show just how big your tank really needs to be, just how big that septic field needs to be and what solutions there are if you don't have room. Um, Nick has been super creative. You know, there's no one size fits all solution, which is part of how tricky this is. Um, but sharing those stories is so important to show people what kind of solutions are available here in Osara? Okay, that makes sense. I'm, we'd love to do that. So next episode, you Nick people, let's get together some success stories and let's just, let's make beautiful examples of it and the next people will grow and grow. Maybe that's our November to start the high season. Like maybe that's what we can launch with a dose of positivity as like a solution oriented positivity. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find ways to progress it, right? Like that's what we need. So yeah. thank you in advance. That's what we'll do. Um, what else do you want to get out there while you have this platform? Ooh, um, those are big things, the, by the way, you don't need to give yeah. us anything. Else. No, I, I think pretty the big sad. thing <laughs> is, is donate. Um, you know, we're waiting on these grants to hopefully get more, you know, engineers, more solutions, capacity training. Um, you know, we're working on that. These grants just take a long time to come in. Um, and for now, I think the biggest thing is send either rich or our organization, your success story or your experience. Um, and I'll be in touch and following up on that to start sharing that um, and keep an eye out for this certification program that we're working on so that everyone can start to flaunt the positive uh, changes that they're doing to decrease their impact. When you're putting together like the homeowner package or your building package, it's going to be really helpful if you have like one for, well, I rent, but I talk to the homeowner sometimes. Uh, we should have one for like vacation rentals to make it cool where people want to stay in houses that have that stuff that would incentivize a homeowner that there's a benefit. Um, you know, you know what I mean? We should just have a version for each situation because some people care totally. a great deal, but they don't even own the house. Then other people just don't care at all because they pay so much money to have maintenance always done. They're like, I'm not worried about that right now. It's not that people are walking around all evil and wanting to ruin the place. I don't think that's the case at all. I think we're all just moving a million miles an hour. We're busy have problems and you're trying to make it in a competitive strange little world and if it's not in your face today or if there's not a reason to do it that's incentivizing a lot of people won't take action so i'm just trying to face that reality and and share it and thank you for doing the same thanks rich yeah i i totally agree i people i don't think mean to be dumping sewage in the ocean you know in most um most of the people here are from elsewhere where when they flush right. the toilet that goes to a community plant and they don't have to worry about it. Um, so things are different here and then we have to figure out how to how to deal with that. Some people still, I probably get messaged once or twice a week still, hey, you guys just need a treatment plant. We have one where we live and it's great. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna play, I don't know how many million dollars to get that installed, because <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're laughing about a sad situation, but uh, thank you for what you're doing, Dr. Edgeworth, all, all of you. Um, everyone behind the scenes and um, appreciate you guys have a good day thanks Rich